My name's Lubaina Yamid. I've been working probably for the last um, 35, 40 years probably as an artist, uh, but also uh, as a teacher at the University of Central Lancashire. Recently, I've enjoyed working with spaces and making interventions, I suppose, if you like, into places and spaces. The installation here is responding on many levels. It's responding to the idea and the project of the textile biennial responding to the region and responding to the history of the industries in this region. It's responding to the collection at Gawthorpe Hall and in its sort of final iteration, you know, where we are here, it's responding to the barn. The exciting thing about working with the textile biennial and super slow way is that they knew my work and they find it exciting enough to offer me a space where I could more or less do what I wanted to do. I'm the sort of person that I have an idea, there's something I want to say, there's something I want to change usually, or there's something I want to highlight. In this context, what I wanted to highlight was the multiple ways that the region engages with textiles, so how historically we have and how on an ordinary everyday basis we still do. Here's this collection at Gawthorpe Hall with thousands and thousands of textile uh, samples and examples. And I wanted to highlight some of the sort of stories, histories, politics and even patterns that are sort of left out of some of the histories of, of cotton and show how those histories are still there, threading their way through the buildings, the people, the songs even, that are the history of this place. And so then, when I was offered the use of this barn to kind of make an intervention, to make a statement about cotton and about textiles, about the region, about politics, it was an absolutely, it was a gift, really. And what I'm trying to show here is the richness of the history of the trade in slaves, the cotton industry in the northwest, in the north generally, and the complicated history of that, and the continuing sort of backwards and forwards legacies of that kind of colonial history. What you will see is waves, oceans, seas, histories and patterns interweaving their way through the building. The 400 metres of cloth goes up and over, up and over, in and out and up and over, from one end of the building to the other. I'm trying to show an opulence, rather than showing some of the suffering of working in those factories that those cotton workers had to do, or the abject horror of working in cotton fields in Northern Carolina, I want to show the kind of richness of that contribution. You can look at cities like Liverpool and London and focus on the terror and the horror it took to make those cities. But there's also a kind of strength that people can get, that we must try and get in a way, from the fact that we contributed to how this rich history of this country was able to continue. Uh, my kind of pretty determined to sort of see and make a positive, looking forward, ownership, spreading the word that we all contributed to what we have and to try to make sure that those that did contribute at a really kind of basic level that made a lot of people incredibly rich are in the end <laughs> the richest because they had something to contribute. These fabrics are contemporary, but what they signify is a history of a colonial sucking of the energy from one continent in order to build up another one. Lots of my work is about understanding that, but celebrating the fact that we're surviving that and making something of it. I make work in lots of different ways, and I suppose this fits into the bigger project that I have about making creative interventions into historical buildings. I'm doing a lot of the work with the, either the fabric or the found objects or the painted found objects that I bring there, but the building is doing a lot of the work. 
a lot of the time when audiences come to these historical buildings, they already know much more about either the collection or the building or the history of the place than I ever could. So in a way, audiences come with lots of their own knowledge. And I'm sort of saying, have a conversation with me through this artwork that might be something slightly different than you'd seen in this space or in this place before. But this history was always threading its way through this place. When we first thought about this project, my studio team was going to make a tent of frame. The cloths were going to lay across this tent of frame. And then I thought, no, the whole building is a tent of frame. So instead of making something within something, it seemed that sort of draping and hooking and the thought that these pieces of cloth are in a way moving. They're moving in and out because a modern tent of frame, the drying kind of goes on mechanically and twists in and out of it. So now I've kind of got a very still version of a moving thing. One of the most important things about this is that I didn't do it on my own. There are hardly any projects that I do, except if I'm painting on a canvas or making work on paper, then I'm doing it on my own. But these kind of big interventions, a whole team of people, only one person made this, and it, it wasn't me. Her name's Ruth, and she sewed all of this 400 meters of cloth together. As we were installing it, I felt very, very confident about the real expertise that went into the double French seam that's holding each one of these together. My studio team, you know, were helping me all the time test the idea. So we brought um, quite a long set of pieces early on in the uh, sort of process. So that was really useful because it meant then when I was installing it for real, I was confident that it could work and it allowed me then to play. I didn't calculate in advance which loop would be what size. I played in the space, but I could because I knew that the super slow way team, the textile biennial team had done their homework. My studio team had done my homework and that I was really making the art in the room with all these people having made sure that it would work. Quite often when I've made something, especially in a place, I feel that I maybe I could have done more or the building is fighting it in some way. But I'm very pleased with how the barn and the fabric and the history and, and the textile biennial are kind of weaving together now. I would like to see more people come to Gorthorp Pool. People that know about it know about it. But what's great is that it, it too is a kind of hidden treasure. So this is something that's hidden in the hidden, in the hidden, in the hidden, inside the invisible, if you like. In terms of textile people, it's a bit of a, I don't know, holy grail. You know, there's a lot of wonderful stuff. So I would like this installation to tempt people to come here who, who don't know it. To feel a sense of pride, I guess, if you do know it, that somewhere like Gawthorpe Paul could be as brave as to let me do what I want in here. I've shown at a lot of galleries all over the world who wouldn't let me take such risks with the space. I mean, everything's very safe, but I have changed it immensely. And I'd also hope that when people come back and see other things or come just to look at the historical sort of magnificence of it, there's a sort of, I don't know, a trace or a tremor still there. And they think about sometimes what's missing in collections, um, what histories are not always revealed. <laughs>